Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakurash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of his only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect. Within the nation of Israel, and Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as you Israelite foreigners. Scattered abroad, that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but are Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch on Des Moines, Iowa, coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit. And um, I'm not quite sure what I want to uh, entitle this lesson, but, you know, you'll see it when it's uh, uploaded. But I was just meditating on, you know, the different things that we uh, we experience in our lives and meditating on our forefathers and different situations and going through a few different precepts and and um the spirit had me really meditating on how you know uh, the lord purposely uh, uh makes us helpless all right he purposely makes us helpless all right so that he can be glorified now what i mean by that i'm gonna grab a couple precepts but i want to grab this uh, term helpless in the edamon online it says unable to act for oneself all right and these are positions that the lord puts us in where we can't do anything ourselves to deliver us, all right? To where it's going to be the faith and the reliance on the strength of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to come in and deliver. And that's what uh, that's what the scripture says in the book of Isaiah. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, and verse uh, 14. It says, uh, Yep, it says, Fear not. Thou worm Jacob and ye men of Israel, I will help thee. Right. So it says, fear not thou worm Jacob. Now, a worm is an animal that's helpless. OK, if a predator comes in, well, all they can do is wiggle around. All right. You know, they can't. They ain't got they ain't jumping up and fighting. All right. They ain't poisoning nobody. Nothing. They just wiggling around. If a predator comes in, they're going to be completely taken. Right. But what? That's them being helpless. And once again, the Lord allows us, he orchestrates, not even allows, I'm going to uh, use the word, orchestrates us to be in those positions. And I want to show that through the precepts, man. All right. So that he can be glorified and that builds our faith and our trust in him. So when we're in these situations, we have to uh, uh, keep that in mind. All right. When we're in situations where we can't deliver ourselves. All right. You've tried everything. You've exhausted your resources, whatever situation it may be. That was done purposely. The Lord made it to where there was no way out. All right. So that it can be acknowledged that he got you out of that, that he delivered you, that he made a way. All right. It says, fear not thou worm Jacob and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, said the Lord Yahweh and thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel. All right. So the Lord, he's going to come in and deliver us. As the scriptures also say in the book of first Maccabees, the, uh, the 12th chapter, first Maccabees chapter 12 and verse uh, seven or uh, 1 Maccabees 12 and, is it 7? Maybe it's 17. All right, this is um, 1 Maccabees chapter 12 and verse, Salakia. Okay, it's verse 15, Salakia. It says, uh, for we have help from heaven that succoreth us, so as we are delivered from our enemies and our enemies are brought underfoot, all right? So this is, uh, uh, we got our help from heaven, from Yah, Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Even when uh, Gideon was going out to war, all right, he had a multitude of men with him, right? And the Lord purposely reduced the numbers, all right, so that, our people couldn't glorify, oh, we we delivered ourselves or because we had so uh, great amount of people with us or numbers and all right, the Lord reduced the army to 300, okay? So that he can be glorified. Nah, you're going to acknowledge that I did this. I intervened. I did this for your behalf, man, right? And the same thing with us, okay? Accepting the fact that we're going to be brought in these low estates on purpose by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. So we shouldn't shouldn't be uh, soon shaken in mind, as the scripture says, it says that no man should be moved by these afflictions. All right. These things shouldn't shake us up because as we read throughout our history, this is how the Lord gets down. 
I'm going to allow you to be brought low. I'm going to make sure there's no way out. And then when I get you out, you can glorify me, man. Okay? This is um, uh, back in, um, not in Isaiah. All right, let me, I want to grab this in the book of Exodus. You know, I was meditating on this, man. This is, uh, <laughs> we, we reached those uh, Red Sea moments. Okay? Those moments where there's no way out and the Lord has to intervene. Right? Exodus chapter 14, and we're going to start at the top and jump around in this chapter. It says, uh, verse one, it says, and the Lord Yahweh spake unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pi Haharath between Migdal and the sea over against Baal Zephon before it shall ye camp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in and I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after thee. So keep this in mind. All right. The Lord specifically had us or uh, told us to encamp between the sea, all right, in the land so that what we would be trapped by the sea on purpose so we can be entangled in the land on purpose. All right. So keep that in mind. So there's certain things that we go through that the Lord purposely put us in that situation. All right. But it says, um. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord Yahweh. And they did so. All right. So they encamped in the land, got entangled. All right. Uh, in the land. So if, when they fled, there was no way out. All right. Trapped in by the sea. Right. All done on purpose by Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, specifically put in that jam. Now I'm going to jump down to uh, verse 10. It says. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Now, so you hear, all right, the, the, <laughs> the lack of faith of our people, the Lord specifically told us to, to, uh, uh be encamped in that land. All right to get tangled up. So when the army comes that as we're going to read to split the sea, to show forth his might and his power, right? The Lord pretty much told us that he was going to deliver us. I'm going to be honored in the sight of Pharaoh and his men. All right. Pretty much watch what I do. Okay. Don't trip. I know there ain't no way out, but watch what I'm going to do for you. Right. It says, um, verse 12, is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness, right? And we can't have this mentality of the wicked of our people. See, here it is in, in, in our escape out of Egypt, our exodus, right? The Lord delivered all of our people, all right? But in this time period, man, if you don't believe in the might and the faith and have faith in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, as it is written in the book of Sirach, the second chapter, you will not be defended, See, niggas that was like this, complaining and everything like that, they aren't going to be defended, all right? <laughs> okay, they'll, they'll, they'll get swallowed up by the enemies, right? So we have to keep our faith in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. It says, and Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So we get in situations where it's like, look, relax, chill out, and you just got to watch what the Lord is going to do. You're helpless. You can't do nothing for yourself. The Lord did that on purpose. There ain't no wiggling, squeezing the way out of this, trying to do this, trying to do that. Nothing's going to work on purpose, right? So that you can sit back and see the Lord deliver, all right? Watch him work, right? And we're going to have to move in this type of faith, all right, more and more in these days to come. That's why it says in the book of 2 Corinthians, let's hit this real quick, then we'll go back to that. 2 Corinthians chapter five, straight to the point in verse seven, it says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. So that's what it is, man. We can't worry about how things look, how it seems or reason rationally, rationally, according to this world, man. All right. As we're going to read in this example, one of many, all right, the Lord's going to make miracles happen. There's no rational way out of these different situations. All right. That's what it's going to be, man. There ain't no way you could reason through this. What well, if this, if I do that, if I do this, then this is going to work and that's going to work. And then it's all, all going to be all right. No. All right. 
It's going to be the Lord just intervening, making something happen out of nowhere. All right. And we have to believe in the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to do these things in our behalf. Once again, we walk by faith. Faith in what? In these words, in his promises, on what he said he would do. Faith in his might, right? Not on what we see. Okay? Not at how it looks. That was the faith of Abraham. It said that he had hope against hope. That he would have a child in his old age. All right? Sarah, she wasn't supposed to pr produce uh, children. All right? How old she was. Abraham, all right? <laughs> You know, he was an old man as well, right? So rationally, they weren't supposed to have that child, but the Lord said it, so it was going to happen regardless. And the same thing, uh, the uh, way that we should move, man. Well, regardless of how it looks, how it seems, if the Lord said it, that's what's going to happen. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Being fully persuaded and what he said that he would do, he was able also to perform. So we have to have the belief that if the Lord said it, then he's going to perform it. Plain and simple, all right? No questions about it, right? So let's go back. Exodus 14 and verse uh, 13 again. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh, shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Right. So we have to believe that the Lord is going to come in and fight for us to intervene. Right. It says, and the Lord said unto Moses, wherefore criest thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward, but lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. So they're approaching the sea, right? Army behind them, chariots, all right, rolling in, okay, crying in despair. So the Lord had to make a miracle happen, right? <laughs> it says, see, the Lord didn't say exactly how he was going to be honored in the sight of Pharaoh. He didn't see, say exactly how he was going to deliver them, all right? But he was going to deliver. And the same thing with us. The Lord ain't tell us exactly how we're going to deliver, be delivered, how we're going to eat, how we're going to make it through uh, uh, Jacob's trouble. He just said that I'm going to do it. You're going to eat. You're going to be merry and have abundance. And we have to have the faith and trust that when we approach that Red Sea, that he's going to make something happen, all right? Having the belief that he's going to do it, right? It says, um, it says, uh, but lift up, lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, and I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. So the Lord is doing all that. He's manipulating everything. I'm going to make them go after you. They're going to trap you in the land, right? You're going to go divide the sea. See, the Lord already had this orchestrated. Just because he didn't tell us doesn't mean uh, the uh, the particular ins and outs of every situation, all right, doesn't mean that we shouldn't believe, all right, or we shouldn't fear. We don't have to worry about those things. That shows forth the faith, okay? We don't see the way out. We don't know the way out, but we know that he's going to do it, right? We know that the Lord is not limited to anything, any situation, right? It says... Um, and I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. And I will give me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. Verse uh, 18. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh, when I've gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the angel of the of the Lord and the angel of Yahweh, which went before the camp of Israel, which was Yahweh Shai. All right. Even Paul broke that down in the book of Corinthians, man. All right, that that rock that went before us and led us up out of Egypt, all right, uh, was Yahweh Shai, man, in that chariot, right? It says, um, it says, and the angel of the Most High, Yahweh, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them, and it came between the camp of the Egyptians, the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to to them, but it gave Salakia, but it gave light by night to these so that the one came not near the other all the night. Verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. So the Lord divided the sea. All right. Who could have rationally before going going up to the uh, the sea, all right, especially in the heat of the moment, all right, being chased by an army, rationally think, oh, well, the Lord is going to divide the sea so that we could walk over, all right? That's not rational to think about that. But once again, 
We walk by faith and not by sight. We trust in the omnipotence and the power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah to make a, a way out of no way. In the book of Romans, the fourth chapter, uh, it, uh, what did, how did Paul say it? All right. The Lord calls those things that are not as though they were. As a matter of fact, let me uh, hit that. Uh, it's Romans, the fourth chapter. And this, even in that same chapter, it, it speaks about the faith that Abraham had. Okay. The Lord makes a way happen out of no way, no rational. All right. And behind it. All right. Science and logic. None of that makes sense. Okay. When the Lord gets involved, none of it makes sense, man. Even in ancient Egypt, when the Lord was bringing those plagues upon Egypt, the Lord had darkness to cover the, 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 the land, all right, for days on end, man. Thick darkness, all right, <laughs> where you could feel the heat of the fire, all right, when it was burned, but you couldn't see the light of it right before your face, man, all right? <laughs> the Lord had fire. The Lord had it rain hailstones, that were on fire. All right. Isn't fire supposed to melt ice? Right. But he caused hailstones mingle with fire. All right. To rain down upon Egypt, man. And this is the might of the Lord. All right. In the book of wisdom of Solomon, it describes how the flames will be going up. All right. But then the Lord would abate the flames. All right. So then a wild beast can come in and devour somebody. And then the flames will rise back up. All right. <laughs> That's the might of the Lord. Okay. Showing you that man, the Lord is all powerful. And we have to have this in our hearts. The knowledge of his, of his omnipotence. All right. We can't limit the Lord. All right. It says, um, Romans chapter four. Let me just scroll down. Let me see. Romans chapter four and verse Salakia. All right, I'm gonna just start at verse. Uh, all right, verse seventeen is is the main point, but I'm gonna start at sixteen. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. Who is the father of us all? As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even the most high who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. All right. <laughs> I'm going to read in the NLT. That is what the scriptures mean when the most high told him, I have made you the father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed in the power who brings the dead back to life and who creates new things out of nothing. The Lord makes a way out of no way. All right. Out of nothing. OK, <laughs> the Lord can materialize food before you. OK. Or the Lord can put the spirit on somebody to bring you food. The Lord can put the spirit on a, a animal to bring you food as these are different uh, uh, examples in the scriptures that I mentioned in, man. All right. The Lord is not limited. All right. It says, uh, I'm going to continue to read on verse 18 in the back in the KJV, who against hope believed in hope, meaning against the carnal circumstances. Yet he believed because the Lord said he was going to do it right. That he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. So he didn't even consider the carnal circumstances. Didn't even question, you know, as it is going to say, man, it says he staggered not at the promise of the most high through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to the most high. And this is the type of faith we should be moving in in our everyday lives. All right. And these times that we're entering into, man, our faith building to this type of faith. Well, yeah, carnally, it looks like I ain't supposed to get delivered out of this. I have no way out of that and X, Y, and Z. But the precept says that he's going to deliver us. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he delivers them out of them all. All right. Sirach 2 and 10, right? These are precepts that we're standing on or we should be standing on, okay, to strengthen us in the midst of adversity, all right, in the midst of whatever the hell that we're going through, man. It says, Verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. All right. And that's all I'm going to read on that, man. 
All right. So we have to be fully persuaded, fully convinced that what he said he would do, he's going to make it happen, man. All right. These are promises. All these precepts are promises and guarantees, man. These are prophecies, man. There's prophecies concerning our deliverance. All right. Not just from the nuclear destruction, but everything leading up to it. All right. It says he shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, and seven shall no evil touch thee. So all the plagues that come before all the little things that you're dealing with in your life, you're going to be delivered all the way through it up into the final deliverance. And we have to believe that because it doesn't profit us if it's not mixed with faith. If we don't believe, we will not be defended. We will not be delivered if we don't have that faith in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. But it says, uh, going back to this in Exodus chapter 14. All right. Exodus uh, 14. And where were we at? Let me see. 22 and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. All right. So the Lord had us walk on dry ground. All right. Once again, science can't. All right. Figure that out. You know, logic. It doesn't make sense logically. Right. It don't make sense. OK, but that is the power that we're dealing with. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it off with a um, few more precepts, Revelation 19 and um, 6. It says, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah. All right. That's how, uh, that's uh, uh, hallelujah. Okay. In the proper he uh, Hebrew. It says, For the Lord, Yahweh omnipotent reigneth. All right. It says, The Lord, our power, all right, omnipotent reigneth. Now, this word omnipotent or omnipotent, however you want to pronounce it, right? Tomato, tomato. It says, uh, he who holds sway over all things. He who holds sway over all things. The Lord can manipulate somebody's heart. All right. Put thoughts in, your, in their mind to give you favor. Right. The Lord made a donkey to speak. All right. This is this is the power that we're dealing with, man. OK, the Lord had the sun stand still. All right. For us in battles. OK. This is the power. That fights for us. What do we have to fear? The scripture says in the book of uh, Peter, man, it says. Uh, how's it worded? Let me just grab it in my my precepts. My um physical scriptures here. I'm gonna just yep, uh first Peter chapter three, and I'm gonna start at verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? So if we're following that which is good, all right, nobody can do anything unto us unless the Lord appoints it, right? <laughs> See, that's the thing, man. That's what Yahweh Shai told Pilate a uh, whole ass, man. All right. Pilate was like, man, don't you know I have the power to put you to death? Man, Yahweh Shai, bro, he, man, he told him, he was like, you ain't got no power over me except what's given unto thee. So we got to keep that in mind, man. Nothing can happen unto us unless the, Lord's appoint, unless the Lord appoints it. And if he appoints it, he has, hey, <laughs> he appoints it. All right. He has his perfect purpose at work. The Lord appointed us to get entangled in that land on purpose just to show forth his might. All right. And we should be thirsting it. All right. To see the might and the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And if we want to see the might and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, we have to be brought into a helpless state where you can't help yourself. Where the Lord has, uh, where the Lord is going to show forth, I'm doing this. I'm in control. I delivered you. He gets the glory for it, man. All right. <laughs> going back. Uh, that was it in that Maccabees or that uh, revelation. All right. Uh, let's end it off. I want to grab this uh, quick example in the book of second Maccabees chapter eight, man, just showing you, you know, the faith that our forefathers walked in, man. Second Maccabees chapter eight and verse 12, it says, now when the word, now when word was brought unto Judas of Nicanor's coming 
and he had imparted unto those that were with him that the army was at hand. They that were fearful and distrusted the justice of Yahweh fled and conveyed themselves away. So you have people that fled from uh, uh, fled from out of uh, uh, the army, man, fled from the battle. All right. Because they didn't have faith, man. OK. It says uh, others sold all that they had left and with all besought the Lord to deliver them, uh, sold them by the wicked. Nicanor before they met together and if not for their own sakes yet for the covenants he had made with their fathers and for his holy and glorious namesake by which they were called so Maccabeus called his men together unto the number of six thousand and exhorted them not to be stricken with terror of the enemy nor to fear the great multitude of the heathen who came wrongfully uh, wrong wrongly against them but to fight manfully and to set before their eyes the injury that they had unjustly done to the holy place and the cruel handling of the city, whereof they made a mockery and also the taking away of the government of their forefathers. Right. And this is another thing we have to keep in mind as well. When we're in these different situations. All right. Our enemies are who, man? It's these wicked people, man. All right. That come up against us, that scoff and talk shit or try and put us in different scenarios and jams. Right. These are wicked people, man. These people are all into the alphabet madness, bunch of weirdos. All right. They hate the most high. You think the Lord is going to be on their side over us? The Lord, the Lord, the Lord is going to be on the side of Esau, the da a damn weirdo, freak, nasty pedo that hates him above his servants that love him. Of course not, man. They will not get the victory over us. It's written, all right? Yes, we catch hell. Yes, we go through afflictions. Yes, we're being refined in the fire and so on and so forth. But the Lord is not with these motherfuckers, man. The Lord is with us, all right? All this wickedness these people are doing, man. The Lord ain't with them. The Lord is with us, okay? But it says, um, it says, um, verse 18, for they said he trust in their weapons and boldness but our confidence is in the almighty who at a beck can cast down both them that come against us and also all the world so judas maccabees he is like man look the lord just with a beck a beck is just a gesture all right you know when you see a king sitting on the throne all right and you might have somebody that comes before him and whatever the scenario may be man all right he's sitting there <laughs> you know and then just with a gesture in his hand all right. He just moves his hand with a flick of the wrist. All right. Then some soldiers come come through and and, and cut a nigga head off. All right. <laughs> just just with a beck, a gesture. All right. That's how our Lord is, man. Our Lord, it even says in Wisdom of Solomon, with one rough word, could he bring our enemies beneath us, man? So here it is. Our Lord is omnipotent, has all this power. All right. He could just snap his finger and shake the earth. Okay. He could say one one word, all right, one word and, and 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 destroy everything, man. Okay, that's the power that we're dealing with, and he's in control of everything, man. So different things that we're going through, it's not like it's outside of the control of the Lord. It's going everything is going according to plans, all right. The hell that you're catching is going right according to the plans of the Lord, all right. The situations that you're in is going right according to his plan, right? According to his good pleasure. So we have to keep that in mind. We're in the hands of the Lord, right? But it says, um, it says, uh, for they said he trusts in their weapons and boldness, but our confidence is in the almighty who had a bet can cast down both them that come against us and also all the world. Moreover, he recounted unto them what helps their forefathers had found and how they were delivered when under Sennacherib and hundred four score and 5,000 perished. And he told them of the battle that they had in Babylon with the Galatians, how they came but 8,000 in all to the business with 4,000 Macedonians, and that the Macedonians being perplexed, the 8,000 destroyed 120,000 because of the help that they had from heaven and so received a great booty, a great spoil. So Judas Maccabees, he reminded them of accounts of our forefathers. He reminded them of the accounts that they went through personally in their own lives of the Lord coming in and help. And this is how we have to strengthen our heart when we're faced with adversity, that fear tries to creep in or whatever the case may be. Right. We have to strengthen our heart. How did Judas do it? 
Man, look what the Lord did for our for our forefathers. Look what the Lord did for us, man. He stirred them up, man. You know, and it says what? Thus, when he had made them bold with these words, so that changed their heart from being fearful to trusting in the Lord. Man, yeah, you're right, man. The Lord did deliver us, man. Yeah, man, fuck them heathens, man. They are wicked, man. Look at what they did to us, man. You think the Lord going to be with them? He stirred up their hearts, man. But it says, uh, uh, armed them with uh, comfortable words, man, as it says in 2 Maccabees as well. All right, but it says, um, uh, that's when he made them bold with these words and ready to die for the law in the country. He divided his army into four parts. And when you read the rest of the story, all right, uh, uh, the Lord came in and helped them and delivered them, man. Okay. Where they won that battle in that war. Right. But overall, you know, to, to sum it all up, hey, we have to have that faith in these words, man. We have to walk by faith. Believe in the omnipotence of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai in any and every situation, man. I can't say I'm going to believe that when I'm going to get delivered from nuclear missiles. Yeshai always mentions this, man. We believe we're going to, we believe it's going to come a day where missiles are going to be shot off. The alarms are going off and that a spaceship is going to come and take us up. All right. We believe that. But yet we don't believe that the Lord is going to deliver us out of these little situations that we're in at times or we're wavering and fate. You know what I'm saying? being shaken by these things all right so we got to put all that in perspective man our faith should be growing more and more all right and that's a gift from you how about shimmy i was that's given unto us man so that's something we could pray for fast for increase in the faith remove doubt and fear far away from us man you know to where we're settled in our mind man he whose mind is stayed upon the lord he'll keep him in perfect peace right our faith should have us to be stable in different situations that we find ourselves in man you know, but through the spirit, I'm going to end it right there. And, you know, Lord's what I was at to find. I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakak, with Ash, double honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful of life, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.